Okay, very good morning to you. Tuesday 20th of August, hope you're doing well. Uh, before we kick off the briefing, just a reminder for tomorrow night, uh, Sam and I will be doing a live YouTube session from 6 p.m. from the office. Um, it's gonna be based around a, a kind of Q&A format of which we're gonna bookend the session with coverage of the FOMC Minutes Live. So all you need to do is go on to, well, you're on the YouTube channel now, uh, click subscribe, and then hit the notification bell and you'll be alerted about five minutes before the session begins with an automatic push on your on your phone or if you want to watch it on your desktop. There'll be a chat facility, uh, so it should be quite a good event uh, and also with a market piece of information coming out at the end. So hopefully you can join us. Um, but otherwise, just moving on to not so much the headline here, we'll get into that in a second. The charts this morning, um, fairly quiet session really overall yesterday. Uh, much of the week as we were looking at it at this time yesterday was a, based around a couple of key points of interest, in particular on Friday when we hear from the Fed Chair Jerome Powell, of course. That's, that's probably the biggest thing that's happening, although we have some other points of interest like the FMC minutes, obviously on Wednesday. Uh, we've got the ECB minutes as well coming out later in the week. Uh, but this is quite typical. People are waiting that kind of main event. So Monday was quite quiet. Uh, albeit a positive finish across the three major indices. So managing to claw back a little bit of the, the losses that were seen from, from last week. A couple of other headlines to be aware of from Trump tweeting, requesting more rate cuts and now quantitative easing. Uh, a Washington Post source article talking about further fiscal stimulus potentially in the form of uh, tax cuts. Uh, and a few other things as well, that um, a, a interesting Fed comment as well from Rosengren uh, that we're going to review in a second. But looking at the charts this morning, largely a reflection of that. Probably the most distinct factor of the morning is a little bit of a continuation of, of dollar strength. The Dixie, albeit flat, it's testing at the moment technically an area of uh, some near-term resistance. And definitely worth keeping an eye on the major currency pairs. Um, in particular, cable still remains one that's very closely on our radar. It had a decent kind of recovery, if anything, last week. Um, a bit of a pullback from what had been what looked like closing in on a retest of that post EU referendum low, but never really quite materialized. But we're still just around a point away from that at the moment, so we're still keeping an eye there. Euro trading at the 111 handle this morning. Uh, overall, pretty flat, but again, with overall prevailing dollar strength, isn't, and I'll show you some other charts in a second. Um, the difficulty that the US are having at the moment from both the Trump, more importantly, point of view, but also from the Fed, is that with all the other global central banks easing, it's kind of the fact that the US is a little bit further ahead in the monetary kind of cycle of where they are and their economy is generally um, performing, albeit slowing, showing some signs of slowing down. Things are just worse elsewhere globally. And so as a default factor, then the dollar kind of outperforms. And if there's any positive signs on the trade war as well, that obviously helps uh, the kind of overall sentiment for the dollar. Uh, and so that's not good, of course, for Mr. Trump, because uh, it continues to make the US, in his eyes, ever more uncompetitive against what he feels is market manipulation on behalf of a lot of other foreign central banks to artificially weaken their currency. So we'll have a look at that in a second. Uh, outside of the FX markets, things are very quiet. Fixed income, uh, the 10 years basically flat. Uh, a little bit of a higher move in buns this morning. I think if I look at the calendar, there is a uh, some talk about an auction. I'm not sure if it's whether it's today or tomorrow coming out from Germany that could be quite interesting just given uh, the negative yield curve at the moment. Um, otherwise, oil pretty flat. Uh, gold the same, down marginally, but nothing really too interesting this morning. So <clears throat> I'll let Sam go into that more. Let's get straight into the news. Um, this was the first one I want to talk about. This came out yesterday and did help um, bump the market up a little bit. And this was according to a source in the Washington Post. And it was talking about senior White House officials are discussing the possibility of a temporary payroll tax cut in an effort to boost the economy in the face of a potential slowdown. Now, this is quite interesting because you know, there was an article in the FT I was reading uh, that was written by quite a senior chap at BlackRock this morning. 
and he was talking about the fact that central banks are running out of ammunition and and this is where really the, the fiscal side comes in uh, and certainly this has happened before in the wake of the financial crisis uh, payroll taxes were temporarily cut by President Obama at the time in order to boost consumer spending in the initial phase of the recovery post financial crisis uh, but that expired in about 2013 uh, and so it hasn't happened before but obviously it's another form if you like of trying to uh, counteract if there were signs of a looming economic downturn interestingly I wonder how much of this is just trying to um, kind of fight and push back against this media narrative of that inversion of the yield curve um, you know I was looking at the kind of Google metrics of people searching of recession and these types of things or word counts of articles mentioning that word and it obviously spiked last week and it's one of those things where as long as the um, the parties at play that being the government and the central bank can get hold of that and try to to mitigate the runaway herd belief about a recession then actually then you can kind of stop that self-fulfilling kind of prophecy to some degree because ultimately that to a large extent can be what drives uh, these inversions is when it becomes this kind of almost fixed belief that because it's happened before it will happen again and that ultimately then leads to the same thing happening if that makes sense so um, how much of this type of you know drip feeding in this type of article is as much as actually you read it it seems it's a long way off of, of this idea being implemented or even brought forward to Congress. But it's just interesting that this tends to come out after what we had last week, which is obviously a, a, a kind of build up of this idea of a, of a downturn is looming. And so to counteract that quite interesting uh, attempt, I feel, by the administration to sort of drop these types of source comments, which we know where they come from, uh, in all honesty. So that was that was an interesting one yesterday. The other one was um, this chap, I'm not sure if you do recognize him or not, but he is a uh, the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston president. So in terms of the 12 regional banks in, in the U.S. that form a kind of monetary policy committee members, this chap is the head of the Boston one. Uh, his name is Eric Rosengren. He is a voter this year, and he, interestingly, in an article said he signaled no willingness to support further interest rate cuts saying the U.S. economic conditions are still good and that easing policy would encourage a worrying bu debt buildup. So again, he said that he signaled no willingness to support further rate cuts. Now, one thing to be aware of here is this is that hawk dove spectrum, if you like. And as you can see here in 2019, Rosengren is a voter. But uh, other than Mester and George, Rosengren is one of the most hawkish members out there and so he has dissented before by disagreeing with recent cuts so it's not that surprising but if you think about this idea of um, dollar appreciation this certainly is, is not helping uh, Trump's ambition uh, of keeping the dollar weak because it's this type of commentary that obviously starts to then counteract some of the markets you know quite dovish expectations about deep rate cuts when you've got people like this dissenting albeit fairly in line with their, their general stance on, on policy um, another thing that I did see last night that I think you do need to be aware of when we get to the open of Wall Street uh, a bit later and this came out in the Wall Street Journal again citing sources but effectively saying that um, if I get the main crux of the article a group of states is preparing to move forward with a joint antitrust investigation of big, t big technology companies. According to people familiar with the situation, adding another layer of scrutiny to industry already under the federal spotlight. So again, this is important for the fact that those big uh, kind of names that can be highly influential if you're trading the index future, uh, so the likes of Alphabet's Google, Facebook, Amazon, all these types of companies, obviously if they see a meaningful reaction to further antitrust probes, um, that could be uh, an interesting factor for the Open on Wall Street later on this afternoon. Uh, not, not the first time we've heard of such type of uh, action, but a continuation of this, and the more impactful it could be on the bottom line of these companies, then the more it's got to be factored in in terms of the, the, the price in the context of the here and now. Um, 
this was I mean we talked we talked so far about the strength of the dollar and and this really is, is capturing quite a lot of the attention obviously dollar gained fueled in part by comments of Fred Rosengren as we've just discussed uh, but the dollar has soared to new 2019 high I mean if we look at that on a chart this is what we're looking at um, this is a picture of the Bloomberg dollar spot index and as you can see here having retested a high that was seen very early this month that puts us up in a retest of an area right at the beginning of June and then that means we haven't traded really this firm in the dollar since where we were in December of 2018. Now if you remember that was in a period of where the market was in a short term kind of correction phase that was led by the fact that the Fed was still committed to multiple rate cuts or rate hikes excuse me at that time. Uh, the weakness of the dollar here was that big rephrasing or policy change of direction where they basically said no we're not going to cut which was quite a radical shift for them to counteract the downturn at the time but we've come all the way back up. So this is one of the balancing acts really for Trump. The more positive he might be on the trade talks then the more then that starts to kind of build up the idea that well probably less a need for aggressive rate cuts, more buoyant for the US economy um, in terms of the any evidence of a slowdown if you remove that big macro risk and that by default then strengthens the dollar but the stronger that gets then the more it can uh, be to the detriment of the US's competitiveness so yeah expect more from Trump kind of tweeting and trying to control the situation It's kind of the one downside perhaps to Trump's strategy of trying to kind of bully the the market whether the Fed whether through fiscal policy and so on or whether through threatening government shutdowns and positioning himself and posturing in Congress is that you know the more he tries it's almost like the more you do something the less potent your actions become uh, so that's probably the one risk I'd say that Trump does run by trying to really manage these so frequently and of course the man himself did tweet last night this is what he said he said over a fairly short period of time the Fed basically um, with interest rates should be reduced by at least a hundred basis points with perhaps a little quantitative easing as well. Uh, if that happened, our economy would be even better and the world economy would be greatly and quickly enhanced for the good for everyone. So again, Trump now, you remember, he was calling for Powell when they did the original rate cut a few weeks ago to go 50, not 25. The Fed disagreed and went 25. Trump now is upping the ante. He's gone for let's cut 100 and do a little QE as well so definitely more pressure on on Powell and this is all quite tactical if you listen to if you were to go back and do an assessment on Trump's tweets ahead of every Fed meeting he tends to then uh, really uh, be quite critical of the Fed's policies and given the fact that Powell is speaking on Friday this is now his you know the art of managing the deal he's now Trump putting a bit of insurance policy into play because I don't think Powell will listen to him and I don't think Powell nef definitely needs to go nowhere near as far as what Trump wants. But then if the economy responds to Powell, well, fine for Trump. If the economy then starts to weaken further and equities, let's say, start to fall because of a lack of Fed action, well, then Trump wins as well. This is one of those, uh, again, it's kind of ABC of, of managing the situation for Trump where he's limiting his downside in that respect. So, yeah more of that to come I'm sure. Other things just to wrap up the headlines not really a great deal of movement I'd say on the back of this but we had the RBA the Reserve Bank of Australia minutes overnight in summary they said they're ready to cut interest rates further if evidence suggests that that would boost the economy uh, members would consider further easing of monetary policy if the accumulation of additional evidence suggests this was needed to support sustained growth so they're still keeping very much a downside or an easing bias but I'd say that last comment uh, talking about the accumulation of additional evidence means that there's a fairly significant bar, I would say, in order for them to start you know, continue to commit to delivering of more cuts in the future. So, yeah, if anything, I'd say the Aussies picked up overnight rather than eased on the back of the, the latter part of that, that comment. And then the final thing is uh, Brexit. The pound not really reacting to this. I'd say 
any weakness in cable is more a byproduct of some of the dollar movement of late. But Boris Johnson, um, basically in a letter to European Council President Donald Tusk yesterday, Johnson said he wants to replace the so-called backstop provision in a divorce agreement with a legally binding commitment not to build infrastructure or carry out checks between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. So uh, I'm not sure about you, but I'm getting slight deja vu. Isn't that what Theresa May said or what Theresa May wanted? And he's saying exactly the same thing. So much for changing it up on the most contentious issue of trying to negotiate Brexit. So, yeah, status quo, nothing really changes. What have Europe said in response to this? They've said, you know, this is just a waste of time. You've not brought anything new. And again, such as this um, negotiation has gone, there's a real lack of detail about what some of these alternatives could be, of which there's no substance to the discussion. So all in all, not really uh, much new going on here at the moment on the, on the Brexit side. Quick look at the calendar. What have we got on the docket for the day ahead? Um, very quiet in the morning, to be honest. Um, so I'm sure as Sam will explain, I'd just be really more conservative, sitting on the hands, uh, waiting for the US session to really kick off. Uh, as I said, I'd be interested to see how stocks react, if any, in the tech space. Some of the big companies on the back of that journal article that came out last night. Um, and then from a US perspective on the scheduled economic data, there's really nothing uh, of great magnitude until we get later on this evening for the API weekly crude inventories. Uh, no real Fed speakers until much later on in the, in the evening. So I'd say still likely to be, unless anything unexpected materializes, could be a bit of a repeat of yesterday, fairly tame session. I would be more kind of utilizing a technical orientation to some of the setups without the lack of any real fundamental catalysts really at the moment. Keeping an eye on any further continuation of uh, strength in the dollar, uh, I don't see any reason for that really at this point to change too much. And so maybe just looking, eyeing up the technical levels on the downside for euro dollar cable uh, could be something of interest. Uh, and I'll let Sam discuss that in more detail. All right, that's it from me. Have a good day and I will see you in the chat room. Thanks very much. <coughs>
uh, and a decent enough move and, and suddenly again you're looking down towards the low uh, parts of the year uh, and then, then people start talking about that 120 again so a bit of dollar strength into uh, the back end of the evening despite what uh, what Donald Trump would have wanted um, also to the upside you can see if we were to go worth keeping an eye on on some of these trends that we have been respected quite well obviously that seems quite far away for for now and like we saw uh, yesterday around eight o'clock the selling has started uh, for the pound against the dollar that euro pound we'll just have a quick look at as well which we talked about just the importance of the level we saw on Friday's uh, low which was pretty much exactly the same as the last day of uh, July and that still held quite well uh, again however you are starting to get a bit of a trend so but both of these markets uh, well, all three of them, you have got these trend lines from those lows, uh, which are worth keeping on because if they were to break, you could see a move uh, either way for the euro and the pound uh, against their, uh, their dollar pairs uh, as well. S&P to bring in another, ooh, uh, another good day to, to the upside. Um, two back-to-back -back strong days, Friday and Monday, has, has led us to, to get up towards that uh, pretty important level. 29.40 was the high that we had on the 13th, the 8th, and some nice resistance on the 2nd as well. Just looking at this on uh, a longer time frame as well, let me just remove the, the pivots. We're just starting to... If I just remove this all here... We're just starting to then get that third test you can see so like that euro we've already hit it and it'll be important to see where we finish the day so you've got the 2nd of august the 13th and now uh, today as well uh, just finding quite important resistance and the price action we've seen going back to the beginning of august so this month does quite remind me i'm just moving this here to have a look at the october november december time frame and i remember being in actually in in Dublin uh, at the time when we just couldn't get above this trend line here on the 3rd of December despite some really positive days to the upside we just couldn't get above and, and then we had some obviously negative headlines that come through and just like uh, the high of the year which is that trend channel from the, the previous two all-time highs technical uh, analysis can then lead the way to a further push lower with some negative headlines that come through so just worth keeping an eye uh, on what happens here and certainly if you're a bull you want that level to to break you want us to get a test of all that area that 2940 area and then suddenly yeah sure we can be having a look back towards uh, that low of the area we broke around around 56 and of course 3000 and the all-time high but important point i would have uh, marked up there uh, as well having a look over at gold See how we're trading to date. Let's put this on to 60 minute. Obviously you can see just from that daily candle, uh, a drift lower yesterday. And we did late yesterday come back to test the, the Friday low, which was acted as, acted as pretty good resistance. And the, the bottom area, which again is a zone 15.04 to 03, we found pretty good support there uh, as well. So keeping an eye on all those levels still, uh, we're starting, you can, oh, it's not the most amazing trend in the world, but you can see from the high that we had back on the 16th, we're just getting squeezed in there uh, a bit. Uh, I think with the low volume, certainly you're going to have in the morning, again, just probably worth looking at this as a, a bit of a new range for the market to, to be in here for gold from 13 to, uh, to 02, 03 is where I would be uh, focusing on that. To the downside, if that was to go, obviously you've got the, the whole area uh, from that lower spike around uh, the S2, but with that just being a, a bit of a, a stop run, if you like, I'd still have marked up the low of the 12th at 1498. And of course, the 1500 level. If we were to break that trend line and, and get above the, the range, obviously we're then looking towards uh, the R1 and some nice resistance from the Asian session uh, yesterday. Quick look at oil before we have a look at European equities, which are just trying to test those highs as we speak. Uh, oil, like with stocks yesterday, just grinding higher really from the afternoon into into the close. And uh, just, let me just draw, we had this trend line on yesterday, just to see how that was coming. Was it this one? 
Mm. Well, not not the best respected, but you can see we we've continued to push higher. I actually quite look, and I've got it marked up on my charts on uh, on the computer on the left. I quite like the look of the pivot today. You've got uh, quite a lot of resistance. We just couldn't break through yesterday before finally getting the go uh, into the sort of the European close and 55.72. That kind of area uh, on the futures is is somewhere I like the look of. To the downside, unless we're really to to break all of that and then this trend, you know, I do prefer this market pushing to the upside. Also worth having a look at this just over the last uh, sort of few weeks. Now, isn't the, the best trend in the world? But you can see with just, kind of, well, actually it's not bad to be honest, it's pretty good. Uh, I'd, I'll be keeping an eye on, on should this, should we come back in to, to test it just above where we're trading. Uh, so the pivot important to the downside, but also this trend line, uh, which is pretty much marked up with the, the high that we had of the uh, the morning uh, of the 6th, it was not the 6th, the 14th, 56.54 uh, would be that another test of that trend line. So really important little mini range here in oil from 54 down to 73. Uh, that's where, I mean, that's the key levels that I'd have marked up. A, a daily close above that trend, and we can be looking towards the, uh, well, the, the, certainly the higher the 13th, where so we break below the trend that we're starting to form from these recent lows, well, the market can really start to turn. So the S&P and oil on massive important trend lines, the euro and the pound, uh, and euro pound. So euro and pound against the dollar and euro pound, all coming to important trend lines to the downside. Quick look over at the, the DAX just to to confirm what we were talking about a couple of seconds ago just how we're coming to test those highs and worth keeping an eye obviously for the US equities as well what happens uh, here with the the DAX if we were to get a break of that then the S&P looking to to get to its high uh, as well just bringing in uh, that point worth maybe just reiterating this uh, resistance we were talking about in the briefing yesterday just how important that that whole area was uh, 11,844 give or take a couple of points either way so a break above the the high from yesterday the R1 and, and you know this is the the key level perhaps for the week uh, and to the downside like with the S&P the pivot is pretty important already had a couple levels of support there break of that and then you're looking down to the morning uh, low from around 945 so a bit of a, a gap uh, below the pivot uh, and, and more importantly up towards yesterday's high above there then we can start to get a bit more uh, excited any questions as usual do let us know the pound actually just coming under more pressure here so that trend line that we're we're talking at just to to wrap it up important to, to keep an eye on this we just draw that on you can see we're having a go here at getting below there uh, 121 just being tested uh, again so keep a close eye uh, on that level there in the pound not looking too good any questions please do uh, let us know but i hope you'll have a great trading day